Okay. Okay. Welcome, everyone. And I would like to call this meeting to order at 2.30 p.m. And before we begin, we acknowledge that we are in the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe peoples in the Williams and Huron Robinson Treaties area. We recognize the long history of First Nations and Métis people on this land and show respect to them today. We acknowledge our neighbors, the Wata Mohawks and the First Nations of Moose Deer, Shawnega, Wasaksing, Magnetowan, Henvey Inlet, Nipissing, and Dokis. We are learning from our First Nation partners of the Wasaskin First Nation. I want to, to stress the importance of accepting our responsibility to take care of Mother Earth, her plants, her animals, and our shared peoples. We look to each other and the elders of both nations as a source of inspiration, guidance, and the living memory of our communities. We, like all peoples, must accept that we are stewards of creation and that land, the land comes to us with a responsibility where no hierarchy exists. All life is sacred on earth, in the waters, and in the skies. As settlers, we are grateful to the, for the opportunity to meet here, and we thank all of the generations of people who have taken care of this land for thousands of years for us. Thank you. Um, so I call the meeting to order and ask for approval of the agenda. No, no comments, okay. Is there any pecuniary interest or general nature thereof that needs to be declared today? No. So I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby adopt the minutes of the regular and closed session meetings of council held on June 5th, 2023 as circulated. Could I have a mover? Councillor Getty. And seconded. Councillor Adams. All in favor? Thank you. And I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby adjourn the res regular meeting to hold a public meeting for the following matters. Zoning bylaw amendment application number R 2023-0006-H for Teamstra. Zoning bylaw amendment application number R 2023-0008-F and consent application numbers B 2023-0005-F and B 2023-0006-F for Wetzeler. Consent application number B 2023-0004-F for Wells. And finally, consent application numbers B 2023-0002-F and B 2023-0003-F for Metcalf. Could I have a motion to move into a public meeting? Councillor Getty again and seconded by Councillor Adams. All in favor? Thank you, and that's carried. Council will now hold public meetings for proposed consent and zoning bylaw amendment applications. In accordance with the Planning Act, Council will consider all matters placed before it prior to granting a consent or passing a zoning bylaw. Anyone wishing to receive notice of the passing of a zoning bylaw amendment and who has not submitted such a request in writing should provide your full name and address to the clerk. No one other than the prescribed persons may appeal an application under the provisions of the Planning Act. If they do not make oral submissions at a public meeting or make written submissions to the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin prior to the decision of Council, then the Ontario Land Tribunal may dismiss the appeal. The purpose of Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application Number R 2023-0006-H for Teamstra is to rezone the subject lands to permit the construction of an additional secondary dwelling unit on the property and to implement a minimum septic setback of 300 meters from Whitefish Lake. I now ask the clerk to state the method by which the notice of the meeting was provided and the dates on which that notice was provided. 
Notice of the public meeting was provided by posting the property, posting on the Township of Seguin's website and by regular mail on May 30th, 2023. Notice was therefore considered to provide in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act. Has the Township received any correspondence with respect to this application? No correspondence has been received. Is there anyone present in person in the Council Chambers who wishes to speak in favour of or in opposition to this application? If so, please go to the podium and identify yourself by name and provide your address. No one here. Has anyone registered to speak to this application via electronic participation? No one has registered to speak to this application. Um, and Brady, I see you on screen. Do you want to explain a little bit about it, please? Yes, your worship. So, um, the applicants, they own a large property along Highway 141, and they wish to construct an additional secondary dwelling unit on the property, and the associated septic system will be located 300 meters from Whitefish Lake. So the zoning bylaw amendment is required to permit the additional secondary dwelling unit and to implement the um, minimum setback requirement. I'm here to answer any questions. Does council any have any questions, Brady? No. Nope. nope, I see none. So we move on. The purpose of consent application numbers B 2023-0005-F and B 2023-0006-F for Wetsar is to create two new rural residential lots with frontage on Highway 518. The Associated Zoning Bylaw Amendment application, number R 2023-0008-F for Wetzlar, would so rezone the subject land to site-specific zones and we re would rezone portions of the subject lands to an environmental protection zone. I now ask the clerk to state the method by which the meeting was provided and the date on which that notice was provided. Notice of the public meeting was provided by posting the property, posting on the Township of Seguin's website and by regular mail on May 30th, 2023. Notice was therefore considered to provide in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act. Has the Township received any correspondence with respect to these applications? No correspondence has been received. Is there anyone present in person in the Council Chambers who wishes to speak in favour of or in opposition to these applications? John, you just push the button, turn the mic on, please. Okay. So please afternoon. identify yourself. Yep. Okay. It's John Jackson. Um, the uh, application is uh, straightforward as explained in, in your introductory remarks. It's to create two new rural residential lots. Uh, and it, reads, it needs a, a technical rezoning because it's part of a land holding that was uh, connected to uh, Heaslip Lake. So if there's no questions, I'm uh, quite happy with staff's report. Um, Madam Chair and Council, thank you. Lauren, do you have anything to add? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I do just want to apologize as there is a small typo on page 10 of the staff report um, or page 40 of the agenda package. Uh, the minimum frontage requirement for rural residential zones, which is a zone proposed for the severed lots, is 90 meters and not 120 meters. So each of the proposed severed lots would have 90 meters of frontage on Highway 518 and would therefore comply to the proposed zone requirements. I just wanted to add that quickly, um, but I'm here if uh, Council has any questions. Thank you. Is Has anyone registered to speak to these applications via electronic participation? No one has registered to speak by electronic participation. Does Council have any questions for either Lauren or Mr. Jackson? Nope. Oh, okay. We move on. Thank you very much. Push your little button until it goes off again. Thank you. <laughs> the purpose of consent application number B 2023 0004 F for Wells is to provide a right of way access over the subject lands at 43 Heaslip Lake Lane to benefit the lands at 51 Heaslip Lake Lane. I now ask the clerk to state the method by which the notice of the meeting was provided and the dates on which that notice was provided. Notice of the public meeting was provided by posting the property, posting on the Township of Seguin's website and by regular mail on May 30th, 2023. 
Notice was therefore considered right in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act. Um, has the township received any correspondence with respect to this application? No correspondence has been received. And is there anyone present in the council chambers to wish us to speak? I recognize Mr. Jackson again. Thank you, Thank you Madam Chair. The, uh, uh, the consent uh, pick was picked up as being needed during uh, the survey of the Heaslip Lake lot belonging to Mr. Wessler. Uh, the neighbor uh, was uh, generous enough to allow the uh, existing driveway, which is uh, carved over towards um, as well as property ever so slightly, but it was going to be much less expensive than moving a giant piece of Canada to correct. So that's the purpose of the, the application. Thank you. Thank you. Has anyone registered to speak via electronic participation? No one has registered to speak via electronic participation. And Lauren, do you have anything to add to Mr. Jackson's? Nothing further to add, but um, I'm here if council has any questions. Does council have any questions on of either of these experts? Nope. nope. So we move on. Thank you. The purpose of consent application number B 2023-0002-F and B 2023-0003-F for Metcalf is to permit three lot additions. I now ask the clerk to state the method by which the notice of the meeting was provided and the dates on which that notice was provided. Notice of the public meeting was provided by posting the property, posting on the Township of Seguin's website and by regular mail on May 30th, 2023. Notice was therefore considered to provide in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act. Uh, has any correspondence been received to these applications? No correspondence has been received. And is there anyone present in the council chambers who wishes to speak in favor of or in opposition? Please go ahead. Uh, thanks again. Uh, this uh, actually consists of three law additions, two of which are uh, to correct uh, areas for or allow for uh, encroachment, encroachment occurring because of septic uh, tile field beds. And um, the uh, applicant, Mr. Metcalf, is uh, adding a little parcel from a second parcel he owns, uh, which uh, will enlarge his existing home so that he can have a bigger allowance for a new construction. Uh, the retained piece uh, is actually part of the MZO, which is going to be uh, uh, set aside for that purpose. But that property is on sort of a high level. The, the part that's being added to his home is a, a lower area next to uh, his house at the foot of the steep area, if I could describe it that way. So if there are any questions, be happy to try and answer them. Thank you. Lauren, do you have anything to add? Nothing further, Your Worship. I think John gave a good summary, but there are a, a lot of moving pieces to this one. So again, I'm here if yeah. the council has any questions. Yeah, I do. Okay, Councillor Collins. Yes, uh, John, uh, the Patterson land, is uh, is in this scope, and he just bought Metcalf just bought that yellow piece, that little strip along the Metcalf land, is or, or along the Patterson land. Is that what's what's transpired here? If no. you look at uh, page one oh uh, one oh five on the agenda. You've got the Patterson lot right beside the Metcalf lot, right? Correct. And uh, and uh, in yellow. So he bought that parcel of, of, of property from Patterson? Is that how it's like, that doesn't make any sense to me simply because he's got all this land in the end, you know, in the MZO part of it. And, uh, I'm just wondering why the uh, Patterson uh, number 22 Rose Point Road is even mentioned in this. Um, Could you just explain that to me, please? Uh, it's, uh, it's quite confusing. Certainly. So the yellow strip is actually part of Mr. Metcalf's house property. Uh, but when the land was uh, uh, surveyed, they discovered that Mr. Patterson had a toe of his septic system encroaching on that yellow strip 
which uh, Mr. Metcalf is going to convey to correct that encroachment and add plus or minus uh, a few meters for a uh, setback from the edge of his property as it'll be reconfigured. So the yellow strip was Mr. Metcalf's. It runs more or less parallel to his driveway going into his house. And it's being added to Mr. Patterson's house to correct that septic system encroachment. Okay, thanks, John. Yeah, it's pretty, yeah, it was confusing anyways. Thank you. <clears throat> Does council have any further questions? No. So uh, is anyone registered to speak electronically? No one is registered to speak electronically. Okay. So we will now close the public meeting and reconvene the regular meeting. We have a motion that the public meeting held for the following matters is hereby closed and the regular meeting is hereby reconvened. Uh, zoning bylaw amendment application number R 2023-0006-H for Teamstra. Zoning bylaw amendment application number R 2023-0008-F and consent application numbers B 2023-0005-F and B 2023-0006-F for Wetzelar, and consent application number B 2023-0004-F for Wells, and consent application numbers B 2023-0002-F and B 2023-0003-F for Metcalf. Could I have a motion? Uh, okay, Councillor Bozinski and seconded, Councillor Finson, all in favor. Thank you. So this follows our public meeting. I have a motion that bylaw number 2023-061, being a bylaw to amend the Township of Seguin zoning bylaw number 2006-125, Property roll number 4903-010-009-06001, application number R, 2023-0006-H for Teamstra, is hereby deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time and passed by council. Could I have a motion, please? Councillor Adams and Councillor Getty, all in favor. Thank you, that's carried. Two for these ones. A motion that bylaw number 2023-065, being a bylaw to amend the Township of Seguin zoning bylaw number 2006-125, property roll number 4903-030-003-01950, application number R 2023-0008-H for 51 Heaslip Lake Lane for Wessler is hereby deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time and passed by council. Can I have a motion, please? Councillor Bozinski and seconder, Councillor Getty. All in favor? Thank you. And this is the second part of that that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby grant provisional approval to consent application numbers B 2023-0005-F and B 2023-0006-F for Wetzeler, subject to the conditions set out in the decisions. Could I have a motion? Councillor Finson and seconded by Councillor Adams. All in favor? Thank you. And I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby grant provisional approval to consent application number B 2023-0004-F for Wells, subject to the conditions set out in the decision. Could I have a motion, please? 
Councillor Collins and seconded by Councillor Getty. All in favor? Thank you. And I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby grant provisional approval to consent applications number, it's the same one, consent applications number B, 2023-0002-F and B2023-0003-F for Metcalf, subject to the conditions set out in the decisions. Motion, please. Councillor Fellner and Councillor Adams. You guys on the screen are sleepy. All in favor. Thank you. Council will now consider the following road allowance applications. Shore Road Allowance Application Number RAS-2022-0006-H for Loma on Dyson Lake, Bylaw Number 2023-049. Shore Road Allowance Application Number RAS-2022-0010-F for Marchant on Otter Lake. Bylaw number 2023-050 and Shore Road Allowance Application number RAS 2022-0003-F for Zupanic Kick on Osler Lake and that's Bylaw 2023-048. Have any written objections been received related to these applications? No written objections have been received. Is there anyone present in council chambers who wishes to speak to these applications? If so, please move to the podium and identify yourself. No. Has anyone registered to speak to these applications via electronic participation? No one has registered to speak to these applications. Okay, so I have a motion that the bylaw number 2023-049 being a bylaw to close, stop up and sell a portion of the original shore road allowance application number RAS 2022-0006-H for Loma is hereby deemed to have been read a first, second and third time and passed by council. Um, could I have a motion please? I'll move that motion there. Okay, Councillor Collins, they heard me. And a seconder, Councillor Bozinski, all in favor. Thank you. Um, Lauren, do you have anything to add on this one? Nothing to add, Your Worship. I'm here for questions. And Lauren's on his hot seat again. We have a motion that Two for this one. Okay, that bylaw number 2023-050, being a bylaw to close, stop up, and sell a portion of the original shore road allowance, application number RAS 2022-0010-F for Marchand, is hereby deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time, and passed by council. Could I have a motion, please? I'll move that, Mayor. Councillor Fellner, and a seconder. Oh, I'll second Vincent. that. All in favor? Any questions <laughs> for Lauren? No, all in favor? Thank you. And this is the second part of that. This is a motion that bylaw number 2023-051, being a bylaw to deem lot 12 of plan 264 pursuant to the section 50 bracket four of the planning act not to be on a plan of subdivision property roll number 4903-030-006-02515 file number d 2022-0003-f for marchand is hereby deemed to have been read a first second and third time and passed by council could I have a motion, please? I move that. <laughs> Terry Fellner and seconded by Councillor Adams. All in favor. Thank you. I think we have one more, right? And final road allowance 
motion that bylaw number 2023-048 being a bylaw to close, stop up and sell a portion of the original shore road allowance application number RAS 2022-0003-F for Zupankic is hereby deemed to have been read a first, second and third time and passed by council. Could I have a motion please? Councillor Getty and Councillor Bazinski. Any questions for Lauren? Nope, all in favor. Thank you. Can we move to delegations? Um, so we're moving to item 7A. And I am assuming Audra is going to be on screen. Audra's here. Okay. Okay. Audra, you have the floor. You need to push the little button so the green light turns on. Welcome. Thank you. And I'll remind you and everyone else that you have a 10 minute window for your delegation. Okay. Um, yes, there we go. Is that what you want? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to speak to um, council today. Um, I'd like to introduce myself first. I'm Audra Nicholson. I'm 23 years old, born and raised in Seguin. Um, and I just graduated from the University of Guelph from biomedical engineering. And I've been announced to the 24 and under national team for 2023. Um, so some of you might be wondering, what is dragon boat? Dragon boating is basically a really, really big canoe with 20 paddlers. They sit 10 rows side by side um, with the drummer and the steers that you can't see in this picture. Um, and I have been dragon boating since I was 12. So about 11 years now. Um, I remember my first time paddling. It was back in April, 2012. Um, there were ice tray chunks on the river. It was really cold. Um, I don't know why I kept coming back, but I think I just fell in love with the sport and the community of it, and I've st stuck through it. Um, so I paddled with the local team in Perry Sound called Eat Trout for, um, throughout high school. Um, and then when I moved to the University of Guelph, I thought my career in dragon boating was over. And then I found out that the Guelph, University of Guelph had a team. So I joined it and then fell in love with the sport all over again, decided I wanted to be on a bigger team, a more competitive team. And then, so now I'm part of the Pickering Dragon, Dragon Boat Club and have been with them since 2019. Um, but I didn't get to compete with them until last year because of COVID. So last season was our first season back at the races um, for dragon boating, which is really exciting. Um, and then last fall, I started trying out for the national team. Um, so as you can see here, um, the top photo was from the junior national team in 2017. The bottom photo was from 2015, both junior teams. Um, if you can't spot me, I circled myself in red and black. Um, so I was on the junior national team before, and now I'm on the 24 and under national team. So a bit of a step up um, in the process and um, I guess competition level. And both times I was on the team before um, were great racing experiences, um, made lots of friends. Even in that two week period of like just being on the team together, I made friendships that last a lifetime. Um, I just saw one of them on the weekend at a competition and I'm meeting up with another one um, later this week. And I actually have some friends um, overseas, uh, one in Australia that I'm still in contact with uh, through Instagram, amazing world we have today. <laughs> Yeah, um, and then these opportunities also brought um, home some souvenirs, like hardware. Um, so I have some medals that I can pass down. So most recently, um, I came back from the selection camp in Montreal, um, the May long weekend, and this was the final selection camp. So after trying out for seven months um, of grueling and vigorous training um, for this team, as well as my um, home competitive team, 
um, I found out that I was selected um, out of 26 women um, to be on the 24 and under women's crew. Um, the, everyone was selected from three centers, so Montreal, um, Vancouver, and Toronto. So I had to do a bit of traveling um, to actually try out for these things. <laughs> um, and then, as you can see, my name's right there. It's a little small, but um, I also made the team with uh, some of my friends from my Pickering Club, which is really exciting um, to be able to be on a team at this high level with them in a different kind of atmosphere. So a little bit about the races. I explained what a dragon boat is. It's like canoeing, but a little bit more competitive. Um, there are three rosters, open women and mixed. So currently I'm only on the mixed or only on the women. And then they'll be selecting the mixed um, in our training sessions before the competition. Um, and hopefully I make that team as well. Um, and then there's four different lengths. There's 200 meter, which is a really fast sprint, 500, which is kind of the big event, the 1000 meter, and then the 2000 meter. Um, the 2000 meter is unlike the other ones because the other ones are straight races. The 2000 is actually the 500 meter four times. So you do 500 turn, 500 turn, 500 turn, 500. So um, it's really exciting in the turns, especially by the last one because it's a stagger start. So by the end of it, there's a bunch of boats going to the turn at once. You can get a little bit grueling and sometime boats uh, collide, but it's all part of the sport. <laughs> um, so this year, the competition is in Thailand, Patea, Thailand. Um, and um, I'll be traveling across the sea like this. Um, and, um, oh, it's missing one. Okay, well. This is sort of the schedule. Um, it's missing one of the bulletins. I don't know what happened, but I will be traveling from the 30th to the 31st. And then um, the first to the seventh, we will we will be training in Thailand together as a team. This is like our only opportunity to kind of blend together um, because we're all from across Canada. So we haven't actually met people from like Vancouver and such. I know the Montreal athletes, um, but we have yet to meet the Vancouver athletes. So this is a time for us to bond and create that blend in the boat and then the opening ceremony is August 7th and then we move into the racing on the 8th to the 13th and then on 13th we have closing ceremonies and then we all go home <laughs> um, so it's a pretty quick event um, not a lot of time to be together um, this is the racing schedule so as I mentioned the different lengths um, and the different divisions that's kind of how the racing schedule will pan out um, in the past, Seguin has supported athletes on the national dragon boat team back in 2013, a total of $3,000 was split between two athletes. I wasn't a part of the cycle, um, but I had friends on it. And then in 2015, a total of $3,000 was split between five athletes. And then in 2017, I was the only one um, who got $600 between one. Um, so I just wanna say thank you for the support in the past. Um, you helped me reach my financial goals and um, I was able to compete at uh, the international level without any barriers, which was great. Um, so um, I guess now to why we're kind of here today, um, I'm asking for it to be supported by McKinney again um, to help with these financial um, barriers um, in participating. It's about, $6,000 between flights, um, travel, uh, other travel, accommodations, food, and uniforms. Um, so it's pretty expensive compared to the past because it's in Thailand and flights are really expensive right now for whatever reason, I guess because gas prices are skyrocketing. Um, and I also want to be able to inspire youth athletes in the community um, to support, to, to pursue um, ambitious goals. Um, back in 2013, I wasn't on the team, but I saw some of my teammates and friends make the team and seeing that um, kind of inspired me to do it in the next cycle and then in the next one. Um, and now I'm, I can say I've been on Team Canada three times, which is pretty amazing. Not everyone can say that. Um, and I'm also going for gold and I would like your help to do that. Um, as you saw on my hardware, I would like to bring home some more and maybe the Nations Cup as Canada um, as a whole. Um, 
yeah, I can't wait to support uh, Team Canada and Seguin uh, in Thailand uh, this August. Um, and I would love to have any kind of support. Thank you very much. You've done you've <laughs> done the community proud, and you're a great presenter. Do, any questions from anyone on council? Councillor Finson. Yes, I have a question. Councillor Finson's first. Um, it's not really a question. I just wanted to say congratulations. I know how hard it is. Um, two of my children paddled at, in Pickering for years, uh, maybe five years. Mm -hmm. And a lot of their friends, are, they still have paddled uh, internationally. In, they've been to Japan and China paddling. So I understand where you're coming from. Um, I also paddled for five years uh, in Pickering, uh, starting in January. We started in the pool, and, and so I get what you're going through, and I it's a wonderful sport, and I just want to say congratulations. It's really hard to make the Canada team, so good good show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Councillor Collins. Yes, uh, if um, we decide to um, uh, give her a little bit of money to uh, help her out in this trip, uh, does, uh, does she need a Seguin uh, chaperone? <laughs> Are you volunteering? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think the 24 and under team is looking for any chaperones, but maybe no. the juniors. <laughs> well, I'm support. I'll support you in any way my uh, colleagues decide to go on this. Thank you so much. Thank you. I just turned to our chief administrative officer to understand what budget allocation this would fit under um, and where we could find some fu funds to help Audra. Uh, thank you, Worship Council. I, it's a fairly low uh, dollar value, depending on where you want to go. Um, we can make it work if uh, if Council had the desire to put forward uh, $1,000 or something to that effect. Uh, we will find a place to make it work within the budget. Council Getty. Then I will put forward a motion to uh, find $1,000 in the budget to support Audra in her uh, representing us in Thailand on one condition that when you win gold, you bring it back here and show it to us. Um, I would second, I would second Okay, that. we've got a seconder <laughs> in Councillor Finson. Um, just a question for you, Audra. In order for you to motivate and keep in touch with young people who might be following you, are you posting any of this on a Facebook page or something that the community could link to as you travel and as you compete? Yeah, I definitely can link it to my Facebook. There should be a live stream of the races. I know Thailand's um, 11 hours ahead of us, um, but I can definitely um, put that info on my Facebook and have um, it be like shareable and post my journey there. Okay, and if there's a team's website, send it to us yes. as well. Yeah, um, I think the team has an Instagram as well. Uh, I'm not sure how active they are at the moment, but I'm sure it'll ramp up once we're competing. Jason, go ahead. I'd be happy to uh, connect you with our, our communications officer and we will, uh, we're always proud to, to share our local uh, successes. This is a huge success and, uh, and I will make sure that you connect with Valerie before you leave here today okay, uh, and she will get your information and we will uh, share your journey with you as you uh, travel to Thailand. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion on the table moved by Councillor Getty and seconded by Councillor Finson that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby approve the donation in the amount of $1,000 to Audra Nicholson, a member of the Dragon Boat Canada Team Canada 24 and under division to assist with the cost of Audra's participation in the International Dragon Boat Federation's 16th World Dragon Boat Racing Championships being held in Pattaya, Thailand from August 7th to 13th, 2023. All in favor. And that is unanimously carried. Good luck. We want to see a gold. Thank you so much. I'll bring <laughs> back my gold or whatever medal I have. <laughs> I'm hoping. <laughs> okay and i'd like to welcome doug mccann is our second delegation who's got a request for support for the submission of the application to the crtc 
for an FM community radio station. So welcome, Doug, a counselor from another community. Hmm? Okay, just wait till we get your presentation up. And I'll remind you about our 10 minutes, but let me just... I thought I had an hour. <laughs> Are we on? Not yet. Well, you, you're you are live from a sound point of view, but Craig's in the process of bringing your presentation up. Okay. 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 Actually, I hadn't really planned on on the visual, but that's fine. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good afternoon, Mayor McDonald. Uh, I'm sorry, McDermott and and Council, and uh, staff and public. It is odd sitting on this side of the podium or standing on this side here. <laughs> so bear with me. Um, I'm here this afternoon and uh, with me is Mr. Bob Boland. Um, we recently incorporated a, a, a not-for-profit organization with the uh, mandate or objective of uh, establishing commu community radio in Perry Sound. Um, community radio, there are about 200 stations in Canada some of them are Indigenous, some of them are campus stations. But community radio uh, more or less picks up where commercial mainstream media uh, sort of uh, drops off in that there's community radio focuses on and embraces the community. So um, you're more likely to, uh, with community radio, to hear about uh, local arts and history. Um, sports and news uh, presentation uh, talk shows that that uh, center on uh, human interest and such and, and and basically i don't know that people know this but airwaves are public property and so community radio is all about providing access to that public property uh, to the uh, people of the area so what we uh have done is we've incorporated uh our our site our i'm sorry i'm a little nervous here um so we've incorporated our, our our organization and we're moving forward at this point we're trying to uh pin down a location for our studio and also for a location for a transmitter and uh, antenna and um some of the programming that we'd be uh, uh, providing would be a wide scope of information and comprehensive news coverage, um, local sports coverage, music by new and local talent, a uh, variety of music genres, spoken word programming, including talk and civic affairs, uh, promoting special interest groups and hobbies, highlighting local uh, consumer affairs and employment opportunities to uh, the idea of promoting fundraising efforts and local service organizations and reflecting local culture, religion, and um, uh, ethnicity. Community broadcast radio is the platform on which the listener trumps the, uh, the corporate uh, profit and shareholder. Um, so it's all about embracing the community, and and I think if you look at the landscape of broadcasting, uh, whether it's radio or TV or newspaper, uh, in this day and age, it has become very, very uh, centralized. So there was a time, if you worked for a radio station, you could walk down the hallway and into the owner's office and um, and discuss things. There was a local autonomy. Uh, People at the local level uh, didn't uh, uh, make the they they made the policies they enforced the policies, whereas today those policies and programming decisions are made uh, at a corporate level, uh, usually uh, at an office which is uh, offsite out of the province. And in this case, if you look at uh, Moose FM. 
Uh, it's owned by Vista Radio. And uh, of course, Vista is located in, in British Columbia. So ownership, um, so the landscape has provided, um, I, you're seeing more, you're, you're seeing more radio stations owned by less uh, operators and, and uh, corporations as time goes by. So on a local level, um, what's happening is, is you'll find that that feet are off the ground there. The coverage is, is, um, you know, for local news and sports coverage, uh, focusing on, on what's really, really happening. Uh, it's there, but not to the extent that it was at, at one time. And so community radio brings that back and community radio kind of reflects what the golden age of radio was all about back in the twenties, thirties and forties, when one hour was different from the other because you you had live uh, you you might have covered a, a, a live concert uh, somewhere um, you, you you might have uh, uh, music uh, from a uh, uh, various genres it would talks uh, show uh, news and that sort of thing um, so it was more like a block for, a programming type of a thing and community radio more or less offers that in this uh, in this day and age, whereas mainstream radio is is very very um, uh, you know ongoing um, um, steady. What, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Like uh, so. Anyhow, so community radio is is picking up in in various areas that. Um, uh, uh, th that embraces the local local people, and uh, so in our endeavor to get going, um, we're looking for, and, and as we apply to the CRTC for a community radio station license, uh, getting the support of local municipalities, local business, local um, uh, residents, organizations adds a lot of weight to our application as, as we move forward. And so that's basically what we're here, uh, today is, uh, to, uh, to seek that support by, by way of a resolution that we can include with our application as we, uh, as, as we move forward. Uh, our goal is to have the application in by the end of August or September. We understand that we are a candidate from the Northern Ontario Heritage Fund Corporation, because this does fall under the banner of social and um, community. And in fact, in talking to uh, our local representatives, uh, they actually are very excited about this because they've never actually had a program like this to work with and to, to advocate for. So we're very hopeful uh, that that will come about. We do have an engineer that's done some preliminary work so we think we know what frequency we are going to have. Our output will be a medium power output, which will cover uh, the municipalities of the West District. And um, um, it, uh, uh, we even actually have telephone numbers reserved for our uh, studio and administration based on the frequency. Uh, so our, our uh, engineer, uh, basically needs to complete a report uh, before we can continue and complete that application. So moving forward, the CRTC would receive that. They may come back with more questions. Um, they, there could be um, there could be a, a, a hearing. Uh, there could be an intervention. Anybody, any any public uh, organization. Uh, any uh, broadcast undertaking could intervene and say, well, we don't think that there's enough room in the market for another station. And our argument would be that our revenue streams are different, our programming is different, and we're embracing the community in a way that low mainstream media is not doing in this day and age. I, I'm a big believer in, in community building. Uh, you, We basically provide a... Um, uh, a, a collective uh, voice identity. Uh, we advocate for, uh, you know, for what's going on. We believe that this builds a stronger community. And I think that a stronger community builds stronger individuals, organizations, business, industry. Uh, we, we grow as a result of it. 
And I will tell you that from my uh, eight plus years on uh, council, nobody knows what's going on around town. <laughs> it really, it, it just, you're out on the street and somebody will ask you a question about something that, well, haven't you heard, haven't you read? So I, I part of what we're planning on doing is having a very comprehensive news and sports uh, coverage uh, so that people do know what's going on. Now, there are always, there are people who, uh, who don't listen and, uh, and, and as such um, uh, usually word of mouth or Facebook gets the word across, but I find that um, uh, some of the big things that are happening and some of the big decisions that your council, our council are making and others are, are not being heard or recognized um, in, in the area. And I think the community radio can, can do that. Uh, so um, we're looking for your, your support as, uh, as we move on. And I, I guess that's, uh, that's basically uh, all I can see at this point in time. Thanks, Doug. We have a, a resolution before us, but before I move on to that, are there any questions for Doug from anyone on council? Do you have any idea how long it takes CRTC to approve or not approve well, these things? Um, <laughs> I know it's a moving target. <laughs> I will tell you that when Mr. Bolin applied to buy the regional AM station in town here, uh, his his idea was to convert it to an FM station. So he was up against a lot more than we are because uh, he basically was working with two applications, one to buy the AM station and, and shut it down and two to establish what then was known as a first service FM license uh, to, to cover the area. Um, people may not realize that the geography in this area was not conducive for AM broadcasting. And thank goodness for that because the world has, has gone to FM rather than stuck with AM. FM uh, is uh, cheaper and more effective, certainly better sound quality and the station reaches, uh, you know, as far north as uh, French River, Macchur below, and and over to the east side. And and another thing I would would like to 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 stress here is that um, when you're dealing with with a station that that's uh, it's more than Perry Sound, more than Seguin, and, and, and I'm I'm going to give Bob credit for this. Uh, it's very easy to alienate your listeners if you say here in Perry Sound it's 20 degrees, uh, but if you say here in the Lakeland Playland, including uh, Horseshoe Lake, it's 22 degrees. So whether you were in Buena Barrel or Seguin or Matier, whatever, this was your station, and uh, you could identify with it as such. So. That's something that we plan to do too, is, is to incorporate the whole region as community, not just Perry Sound per se. Okay. And so, um, but getting back to your question about how long it would take, I suspect that it could take at least a year uh, before they make a decision. There could be, if there are interventions and if there is a hearing, uh, they could just rubber stamp it and tell us we've got, we're good to go within a year's time. In Bob's case, he was dealing with some pretty severe interventions, which he successfully fought. But it was two years from the time he started writing the application until the CRTC said, yes, you can do this. I don't think we'll, it'll take that long for this. I think we have a, a more simple journey ahead of us. Uh, but it could take them at least uh, a, a year one way or the other. And then we would, would move forward. Okay, that's nice. Um, well, I think I Councilor a, Collins, you have a question. Yes, 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 I do. So, Doug, at this at this juncture, you don't have a location, right? Uh, so, okay, no, 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 Doug, do you have a location at this juncture? We don't have an actual. Okay, uh, has Perry Sound? Have you uh, approached Perry Sound with this? Uh, Actually, we have. Yeah, we sent uh, letters out to all of the municipalities. No, Pardon me? Pardon we me? sent letters of uh, asking for support to all of the seven municipalities in town. So has any of the other six municipalities uh, come back to you? 
Well, our council is dealing uh, with it at the next council meeting in July. It's it's in it's basically uh, in correspondence, uh, which will be read tomorrow. But uh, the next uh, uh, council meeting will be dealt with. Uh, so, uh, so with, right now you're just looking for support, well, verbal support. Yeah. Yeah, Verbal basically. Support. Yeah, I mean, and anything else you want. Okay, that's good. That's all I need to know, Doug. You know, yeah. it's good. Yeah, yeah and I would add to that 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 uh, I, uh, we've been working okay, with. Public... I'm sorry. We've been working with Public Works in Perry Sound. We think we'll be able to put our antenna on the water tower, um, but we've been looking at another location that has right. its own tower right. on site. And that would greatly change uh, our plans in terms of, of uh, housing our own transmitter and uh, an antenna. Uh, if we don't get that site, and it's not looking like it's going to happen. We believe that we'll be on the water tower. And as far as the location goes, it'll we'll find uh, some uh, location uh, in in town to deal with. We've we've been quoted some prices um, and there's a couple that we're particularly interested in uh, as we move forward. You have to keep in mind that it would be nice to be close to your transmission site because you do have to send a signal to it. And whether it's a Bell audio line uh, or uh, by dish or, or uh, some sort of a digital line, uh, you pay by the mileage. And so we wanna be as close as, as possible. Thank you very uh, much. Okay, understood. Okay, that's understood. Uh, understood, Doug. Thank you. Okay. And page one hundred and eighty of your agenda package has a draft resolution, but I'm going to read it now. Okay. Um, because it gets a little more specific. Um, so what Doug and Mr. Boland are looking for is our support via resolution. Um, so I will read it. Whereas community radio upholds, roots, promotes, and advocates on behalf of the people organizations, business, and industry, and whereas strong, a strong community builds strong individuals, neighborhoods, business, and industry, and whereas community radio renders a collective voice for the community, manifests and sustains the community's identity, and emerges, expands, and advances the community, and whereas airwaves are public property, and not-for-profit community radio ownership provides community access to the airwaves and fosters programming based on community participation, reflects the special interest and needs of its listeners, stimulates cultural enrichment and socioeconomic endeavors. And whereas community radio promotes diversity in the broadcasting of opinions, spoken word content, and musical programming and focuses on the arts, local history and interests, needs and initiatives, including local and municipal news, current events and local sports, all of which form the basis of the station's programming. And whereas today's commercial media landscape has become more centralized in corporate interest and less focused on comprehensive local coverage and content, now, therefore, be it resolved that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby recognize the importance and validity of community radio and its value in preserving and building a local collective voice and identity while supporting and advocating local interests. And the Council does hereby support an application for the community FM radio as proposed to the Canadian Radio, Television and Telecommunications Commission CRTC by the Perry Sound Community Radio Association. Could I have a motion to Councillor Adams and a seconder? Oh, I'll Councilor second. Adams. Okay. All in favor. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for your time. Thank you, and good luck. Okay. Keep thank us posted. I'd be happy to keep you informed on our progress. Thanks very much. Okay, I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby receive staff reports as presented on the agenda for the June 19th, 2023 meeting of Council. Could I have a motion to receive staff reports? Councillor Getty and Councillor Bozinski seconds it. All in favor of receiving staff reports? Whoops. 
Okay. First one, I, is that Michelle or you? Michelle, I think you're on with the budget schedule. Yes, thank you. This is our budget schedule for our proposed budget schedule for 2024. Um, as you can see, it's been pushed forward a fair bit. We are now hoping that we will be able to pass the budget in principle on December 18th uh, before the Christmas break, which would require a special meeting of council on that day. Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions about the schedule. Everybody has the schedule in your budget package or your agenda package on page 193. Are there, uh, Councillor Bozinski, you have a question before we, we should probably put the motion on the table first. Can we, we have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby adopt the Township of Seguin 2024 budget schedule attached here to as schedule A and that as per the budget schedule does hereby direct staff to schedule a special meeting of council for 2.30 p.m. Monday, December 18th, 2023 for consideration of approval and principle of the Township of Seguin 2024 operating and capital budgets. So can I have a motion to that effect, Councillor Getty? If you come to the meeting, you get your, hand, your name on the agenda a whole lot of times. And seconded by Councillor Fellner. Okay, Councillor Bozinski, you have a question for Michelle. You're on mute. Sorry about that. Michelle, when I was previously on council, uh, what we used to do was have a joint meeting of council and the, the finance committee uh, to review the budget. Um, is that anticipated again, or how is the process going to work? I'm going to refer you, <laughs> Councillor Bozinski, to page 193 of your budget package, line one. Um, that meeting will occur on August 8th, 2023, as outlined in your budget package. Okay, thank you. That was my question. Are there any other questions for Michelle? So we have a schedule in front of us, all in favor. Great, that's carried. I encourage you all to put those dates on your calendar to be aware of and as best you can be there. Um, oh, okay. I have a motion that as per recommendation of staff report number AD 2023-011, the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby authorize and direct staff to submit an application for funding to the Federation of Canadian Municipalities Signature Initiatives Program to complete a feasibility study to determine the options for upgrading the electrical servicing capacity at the Perry Sound Area Municipal Airport and Business Park. Could I have a motion to this effect? Uh, Councillor Adams? And seconded by Councillor Fellner. And I'm going to ask Forrest to speak to this, please. Good afternoon, Mayor, Council. Um, I think the, the report should speak fairly well to the issues at hand, um, but the long and the short of it is as council would be aware, uh, there's some electrical supply concerns at the, the airport that are essentially stifling future growth. Um, we have been approached or worked with Hydro One and Dawson's Incorporated to try to work through this, um, but the, the expense will be significant. Um, from what was proposed from Hydro One, uh, it was essentially like for like without taking into consideration things like redundancy or resilience of the system, um, the opportunities to participate in the market as it relates to distributed generation or energy storage, um, among 
among other considerations around the electrification of the airport. Um, as council may or may not be aware, uh, aviation, much like the transportation industry of vehicles, is shifting towards the electrification side of things. Um, and so preparing the airport and the corresponding business park for the electrification uh, is going to be of critical importance uh, above and beyond the fact that the airport itself is currently experiencing some cons energy constraints. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Does anybody have any questions? Just to put this in perspective, Jason and I and Forrest <laughs> and representatives of the airport have met with Hydro many times. And the last meeting I left, I said, is it the mayor's responsibility to bring Hydro from Niagara Falls to Seguin? And nobody said, yep. <laughs> so we're kind of constrained. Um, the one thing I'm hoping that will be looked at is things like solar power. We got an awful lot of roofs at the airport. So I'm hoping we'll get creative with this feasibility study. In, in uh, Madam Mayor, to, to add to that, the other side of it is we want to improve the overall quality of power. Um, one thing that a lot of say light and medium duty manufacturing businesses look for is quality of power. Um, we'll give an example here. If a extrusion plastic extrusion company wanted to come there and there wasn't a guaranteed quality of power, uh, it can it can cost the business in, in some cases hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars if their extrusion machines go offline during uh, production. And so having a resilient and redundant system actually opens the door to a lot of uh, a lot of different opportunities for new business within the park itself. Uh, above and beyond just providing a quality product to those who choose to invest in it. Thank you. We have a motion on the floor. All in favor. Thank you, Forrest, for leading this. It's, it, it's just for information, right? Yep. Taylor going to speak to it? Um, we have on page 199, you have a report from planning um, about a request from residents of Skulik and Burnt Lake. Taylor, I'll get you to speak to it. It is for information only. Uh, thank you, through your worship. Uh, this is just to provide an update on the letter that was submitted in the deputation to council. I think some of these matters be best addressed through our official plan review uh, to tidy up the official plan policy. I personally don't see the need for an immediate amendment to the zoning bylaw or official plan. I'm not sure if it warrants that type of reaction. And um, I'm here to answer any questions that council may have. Does council have any questions? Councillor Getty. Taylor, thank you. Thank you for the report. Um, Burnt Lake is in in my uh, my area, and I think that uh, uh, the presentation that was made identifies a shortfall uh, within conflicting definitions from the 2006 official plan and the 2006 zoning bylaw. I know that uh, it, it's a complex and laborious process to put together a new official plan. But would it be reasonable as that new official plan is drawn up and implemented that any discrepancies and definitions between the uh, official plan and zoning bylaw be rectified when the zoning bylaw is updated uh, subsequent to the approval of the official plan so that we don't end up in this situation? Because uh, if we weren't in the process of re re redoing the official plan, and then it may be a different issue to bring this forward, but with the complexities uh, of, in fact, developing and implementing that official plan, I think I, I agree with your report. Um, but I think that we, moving forward, we need to uh, have a commitment that any discrepancies and definitions between the zoning bylaw and official, the official plan will be rectified uh, once the plan is in place. 
Uh, through your worship, yep, we can do that. We've I've already noted since this to, that these policies should be uh, evaluated in the official plan review. And there are a couple instances in the table in the report where it notes that OP policies might, maybe we should be mentioning those if they're not easily and clearly implementable. It sets a false expectation, which I don't think is fair to anyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any further comments? Okay, and we move to item um, 8D, which I also believe is for information. No, um, it's mostly for information. Um, it's been in the works for a long time. Uh, Brady, are you gonna speak to this? What, should I put the motion on the table first? I'll read the whole thing. Okay, I have a motion that as per the recommendation of staff report number DPS-PL 2023-044, copy attached as schedule A to this resolution and section E.3.B, additional exemptions under the Seguin Tower, Township Tower antenna system siting and consultation protocol, the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby authorize and direct staff and Miles and Patricia Lang staff, Forbes Brother Limited, on behalf of Rogers Communication at 44 Lookout Point Road, property roll number 4903-010-001-08500, the proponent, to pursue, proceed with only part of the public consultation requirements as required by the Seguin Township Tower antenna system siting and consultation protocol, which are outlined below. A, the proponent will provide written notice sent by express post or courier, regular mail or hand delivered to all property owners and residents within a notification distance of 400 meters from the base of the proposed structure. B, the proponent will provide written notice sent by regular mail or hand delivered to all neighboring land use jurisdictions, emergency service providers, and school districts within a notification distance of 400 meters from the base of the structure. C, the proponent will provide notice to the Innovation Science and Economic Development Canada's, that's INSAID, regional office, and D, all costs associated with the above noted notification requirements shall be the responsibility of the proponent. Could I have a motion to put this on the table? <laughs> Councillor Getty and Councillor Adams again. Um, does anyone have any questions for Brady or the proponent? Rogers is here. Sarah. Sarah. Ms. Duncan, does anybody have any questions? I know that um, Rogers has been in discussions with Mr. and Mrs. Langstaff for over a year, and I did alert them that it would be on today's council agenda. There being no questions, all in favor. Thank you, and that is carried. Um, so we move to business. We have a request from the Seguin Pioneer United Church Board um, to reduce the fees. Um, and the fee schedules are attached in your um, package. I would ask, is Dominique there? I would ask Dominique to weigh in a little yes. bit about what the fees cover. Yes, yeah, so just uh, good afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, just a little bit of background on that. So we we don't often have any issues with our rental fees at facilities because Seguin offers probably the least costly fee structure of many of the municipalities. Um, there are a number of reduced rates for community groups and events, um, but we have come across some discrepancies with regards to some groups. So currently we have some programming and events that fall under the umbrella of the former recreation committees, and therefore they did not get charged a rental fee. So these programs were um, 
for the public and free of charge. Those were the two criteria for it to fall under the Recreation Committee. Um, some examples of those are pickleball, line dancing, potlucks, things like that. Um, as soon as they charge a fee, they fall into the fundraiser or charitable organization category, which then charges a minimal fee. So what's happened is some groups like the United Church have had rental fees waived for events, while others like Otter Lake Church have been cha uh, charged the fundraiser rate. So this is where the discrepancy is. Um, so staff would like to suggest that for the remainder of 2023, we continue to not charge a fee for those who have traditionally booked at no cost. But in 2024, uh, if an event or program cannot fall under a recreation committee umbrella, then we follow the bylaw, the fee bylaw, and charge the proper rate. Thank you. So it's an effort to standardize the process and make it clearer. It is. And That's right. just for my understanding, the fees cover the cost of cleaning set up. I mean, there really is a cost. They don't, but that that's basically why we do it. Yeah, because we do have to have someone go in every time. Um, but as, again, the fees are very minimal and, and, you know, probably don't cover those fees, but we also don't want to raise them. So. Okay, thank you. And it is our goal to fill our community centers with as many activities as possible. Absolutely. So in continuing... With 2023, what would be the answer to the Seguin Pioneer United Church Board that you so would? I would say they've got, it sounds like they have three events coming up in 2023 that traditionally they have not paid a rental fee, and we would continue to charge no fee for those events this year, uh, giving them, you know, enough no, um, sort of knowledge now for 2024 that then moving forward, we would charge the 5151 for a fundraising event. Now, the other option is that we open the fee bylaw and we make some changes. And that's that's council's um, option to, to make some changes there too. So that's a possibility as well. Um, Councillor Collins, you have your hand up. Who are they? They are the Seguin Pioneer United Church. Yeah, okay. Who are they? They're the congregation of that church. And where are they from? Like what? I think, uh, they, I think they're in I folk. think they move from community to community. I think it's very similar to the Anglican church. Anglican? Well, yeah, I think they, they move, you know, fully. Mm -hmm. They do some fundraisers there. I could be wrong, but this is my understanding no. that they've, you know, traditionally have pancake breakfasts at the Orville Community Center or Foley, mm -hmm. and they book under uh, United Church or Anglican Church. Do they have any, do they have any, uh, 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 like, do they have a religious ceremony? Like, uh, uh, like, no. I've never heard of them. I've been here for over 25 years and I haven't heard from them. I've attended or their I'll... pancake breakfasts yeah. in Foley twice. So, so they're from Foley. Fo they they move between Foley and Orville. They yeah. have two, it says we have two sanctuaries, one on Rankin Lake Road in Foley and one in Orville. And I believe the one in Orville is the one on Star Lake Road where there's a group of volunteers that cut the grass in front of that old church regularly, no, I believe. Old, no, yeah, but that's an old school. Is that who we're talking about? No, in Orville, there's a United Church and then the Anglican Church, and they actually yes. both do fundraisers, and they both uh, move from community to community. So the Anglican Church has traditionally had a lot of events in Rosso and Orville. Um, I think United is is Orville and Foley at the moment, but I'm not sure about Rosso. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't know about them or who they are or what they do. That's That was my question. Thanks. Thanks, Dominique. Great. Councillor Fellner. Uh, I think you're on mute. There. Can you hear me now? Things acting up. 
Yep. Am I on now? Yeah. I, I for one, I mean, I, I read the the letter and and understand the um, that they're trying to raise the fund for for basically charitable works. I, I I for one would be amenable to see Dominique come back um, with some exclusions to the user fees for uh, for. Uh, Fundraising for the community for for health purposes, charitable organizations. I mean, I I, I would. Uh, I think that would be a good thing to do. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dominique. Can I suggest that we accept your recommendation to stay where we are for 2023, and as you get into budget items for 2024, let's clear up the. I don't know, inaccuracies or inconsistencies. I don't know what the word is so that it's clear as possible for everybody and that not for profits that are raising money and putting it back into the community have a consistent cost. $51 isn't a lot when you consider what we do go through to make the buildings ready for them. So let's go forward in 2024 with clearer delineations. Will you communicate this decision to the United Church? For us? I can, absolutely, yes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to refer you to your addendum now. And item 9B is uh, Humphrey School graduation is happening this Friday at 11.30 a.m. And they would like a representative to be there. Does anyone want to be there? I do want to be there, but unfortunately I have a prior commitment. So I will be unable to attend. Okay, thank you, Councillor Getty. They are a little late in calling for our attendance. Yeah, Mayor, I, I, I normally I would go as well as if, if someone else couldn't, but I'm out of town, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, thank you, Councillors. I will attend up until quarter to one because I have another commitment at one o'clock. So can you communicate to them that I am available kind of up till 1230? And I hope their ceremony isn't too long. So put that on my calendar. Um, and number uh, 9C in your addendum, you have that we passed um, the... Both Perry Sound and Seguin are entitled to three appointees to the airport commission. And basically this item is continuing our appointment of the three members are Ingrid Mueller, Peter Croft, and Bruce Hatherley as the Seguin representatives through to the end of this December. Um, can I have a motion to this effect? I'll move that. Uh Councillor Finson and is that Terry that said that? Terry, yeah. get some other names on there. All in favor? Thank you. Um, council reports. Let's start with um, Ward One. That's you. Push the button, Ken. On June 6th, I attended a Canada Day meeting in Orville to help get donations or start getting donations for the silent auction for the Canada Day uh, celebration. June the 12th, I attended the chamber, chamber meeting by Zoom. This is the last meeting until September. That's all. Thank you. Councillor Bozinski. Yes. Um, on the third of the month, uh, I think I previously reported it, but I attended Nosler Lake uh, Cottage Association meeting um, on the if there were discussions with the Muskoka Watershed Council, they are looking at um, 
divesting themselves from municipal funding. The District of Muskoka, I believe, funded them $5,000 for operations. And so they, um, they tend to uh, use an awful lot of volunteer help. Uh, there are some good programs. And if you read your minutes, you'll see in the minutes uh, some of their programs that they're, they're doing at the present time. Uh, and they will be making a presentation to us, I believe, in July. Um, and outside of the normal council meetings, uh, that's all I have to report at this point. Thank you, Councillor Getty. Uh, I also have been quiet because it was away on holidays, but uh, I got did have a library board meeting on uh, Thursday, and I've been uh, dealing with this. Uh, Sean, Sean Carroll in regards to some sign issues and discrepancies in the signs on Highway 141 and they've been resolved with Fowler construction. So that's it. Thank you, Councillor Fellner. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, last week, um, I had a few meetings. Uh, we had a, a meeting of the uh, pool board um, on Wednesday, uh, a fairly short meeting, but I uh, got an update from the fundraising team. Thank you. Uh, things going along quite well. And, um, you know, the project's proceeding along. There's um, some decisions that need to be made over the, the, the next month or so uh, as the information comes in, but all in all, uh, moving along. Um, I had a park to park board meeting uh, Thursday. Um, again, we're doing some repairs uh, out on the trail, parts that didn't weather so well. Um, the uh, Matt, the new um, uh, trails maintenance uh, person from Parks and Rec is uh, is uh, actively out on the trail, working with some of the contractors, uh, doing some other other duties uh, on some of the other trails. And I can tell you already, he's making a, an impact. Uh, uh, I think it's uh, going to be a great season for us. And uh, and finally, on Saturday, uh, I participated in the Father Day. Father's Day ride uh, from the Jolly Roger to Spruce Dale. Uh, the event uh, was very well attended. Actually, it was a, we had a quite a few last minute walk in Saturday morning, so we were I think we were over forty machines. I think um, it was a great day. Everybody had uh, a good time. Uh, pretty evident. Uh, you know the improvements on the trail all the way through bridges. Um, you know, flooded spots that are repaired. Still an awful, awful lot of work to do. I mean, it's a long trail, but we had a great day. The weather was good. We had, there was a barbecue uh, a lunch put on in Spruce Dale at their community center by the, uh, uh, by the park to park people uh, from that township. Uh, we were returned to the Jolly and had a great meal, a band, um, probably 40, 50 people in attendance. It, it really, for the first event after COVID, we were really, really pleased. Uh, seems to be a fair amount of enthusiasm for that type of thing. And there's talk of organizing another one after Labor Day. Um, that's it for me. Councillor Collins. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I attended the uh, DSAT meeting on uh, the 8th, June the 8th, just a regular meeting. There wasn't much um, involved there. Uh, you, you would have received a CAO report, uh, and I believe that's in our agenda uh, about the meeting. I had been taking care of a lot of residents' concerns. Uh, this has uh, transpired, I would say, in the last in the last couple of weeks, and uh, 
it's about that uh it's about the uh, 60 meter setback that i had no 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 knowledge of and uh i'm just getting bombarded with emails from star lake sugar lake maple lake duck lake lake isabella lake Manit manitowaba i mean uh I kind of went on the uh, site. I tried to, uh, tr I tried to get uh, some information, more information on it. I'll be asking uh, Taylor uh, later uh, for uh, the information that he has uh, uh, on hand. But um, that is something that's going to be a very contentious issue moving forward, especially on the small lakes. Uh, so, having said that. I will uh, talk to staff about uh, getting some answers for our residents. Uh, the I seen that uh, the Seguin uh, Township has a waste management survey coming up, which is which is God sent. To be honest with you, it's been I've been waiting for this for quite some time, and uh, I just want to make uh, a comment because as you. You know, as you know, I'm in uh, I'm in Ward Five. I probably visit the the landfill site maybe three or four times a a week, uh, and uh, you know I'm still waiting to see some some signage uh, for people uh, tr uh, tran uh, for people that are trespassing when uh, the place is closed. Uh, and I'll be talking to uh, Tom about that. I, it's been six months, I've been waiting for some signs. Um, but I know that there's residents from other municipalities that have for years been taking advantage of our landfill and our transfer sites. And uh, I'm glad that uh, this, is, uh, this is coming to fruition. Uh, I would just like to, maybe say maybe some maybe the survey should go into our tax uh package uh sent out because this is important this is really 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 important as far as i'm concerned but uh maybe i'll talk more uh to tom about that but uh yeah there's a couple of real uh concerns that i have uh that i'm dealing with now. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. I just want to point out that the 60 meters and the shoreline, two shoreline bylaws were circulated to council in advance of the public. So you were given an opportunity to talk about them. And what we, are, what we did do is send out something that pushes the limit, then maybe we can come back. But we've all had a chance to comment on them. The other thing about the waste strategy when it, uh, this survey came out on Friday, I sent it to eight uh, lake associations that I know of the people, and they're already out to all their members. So as council members, you can take that survey and send it to any group or any individual you want, because the tax bills don't go out till January, and we don't want to wait till then for a waste strategy. So there's an opportunity for you to circulate it to all your lake associations or any road association and say, please forward to your members. And I mean, of the six or seven lake associations I hit on the weekend, it's probably a thousand people right there that are at least being reminded to fill it out. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of opportunity for us to circulate that. Councilor uh, Finson. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go uh, ahead. Can we put it on the uh, uh, display board in, uh, in front of the uh, Orville Community Center? Something about that. You want that instead of Canada Day? Pardon me? Oh, Canada Day. I thought yeah. Canada Day was uh, there's going to be no fireworks because there's. Uh, uh, there's still going to be a Canada Day festiv festival with food and uh, everything else. So. I mean, there's the, two sides to it, though. There's two yeah. sides to the sign. Okay. Well, that's something for Dominique to look at in well, community relations. But you you have a responsibility as a counselor to get it out to all the lake associations in your area. So 
Um, Councillor Finson, you're next. I had a DSAB meeting on the 8th, and in that DSAB meeting, there was a lot of discussion on homelessness and the new um, studies and the new paperwork, and I think it's been sent to the township and to the mayor. So it, it was it's a lot of work, and it's going to give some um, really good information to everybody. Um, I had a few calls and messages about the turtles, um, and they're, they're on the move, and just that for people to be aware. So I passed that along to the township and they said they would take care of it. And um, I will be hopefully meeting with a mayor of a town here in Iceland uh, tomorrow, a, a, a family member who, who 20,000 people. I, did, I was just interested to see, to see um, what they do here. Uh, so I will be doing that. Um, other than that, just a few. I've been receiving messages. It's not so easy with the internet here, but I've been answering people and receiving messages, doing my best to get back to those who have questions. And so that's it for me. Thank you. Thank you. Enjoy. We'll be interested in the report. Thanks. So I'll be as brief as I can. Uh, June. I First of all, I hope all of you had a good Father's Day. Um, June 6th, we had an airport commission. June 7th, um, Jason and Forrest and I met with Hydro One and the Independent Electricity Supplier Organization. Came away as frustrated as before. Uh, June 7th was also the Rosso Lake College powwow. And that was very well attended by the community and many members of the Wasaxing community, including the chief and his sister and the Little Spirit Singers. June 8th, I attended the retirement of three people at the Russell Lake College um, dinner, one of whom is Cheryl Bizonette, who's been the deputy head of staff for over 20 years. Uh, and I'm hoping she'll get very involved in the community through Seguin. She wants to. Um, on the 12th, I met with um, Janice Heidman at CBDC. Um, she has been attending some of our Seguin business community meetings, and together we are going to try and update the list of the business directory for all of West Perry Sound, but we're going to start a strategy of a mailer to businesses using the Township of Seguin as a test market to see how it, what kind of replies we get. We know there are businesses that are not on anybody's list. Some of them are home-based businesses. Some of them we don't know what they did, um, but we don't have a list that's up to date. Um, Terry referred to the 14th. We had a municipal services board meeting of the pool. Most of it was enclosed. The 17th, as Terry said, was the park to park Father's Day ride. And um, we attended the dinner. It was very well attended. There was great spirit in the room. Um, when I talked to some people from Sault Ste. Marie who did the 100 click ride, I said, how did you hear about this? Oh, you've got the best trails in the province. We drove all the way down from Sault Ste. Marie to ride 100 clicks on your trails. So that is proof that our trails are economic development. They stayed, some of them stayed at Jolly Roger for the weekend. Um, and it was a great dinner. Um, some dates I want to put and make sure they're all on all of your calendars. This Friday night, June 23rd, is the Family Fun Night at Rosso Waterfront, starting at six o'clock. Um, I really hope everybody will be there. It's a way to thank all of our volunteers. June 29th, I'm hoping a command performance for council to cook for staff um, from kind of 10.30 in the morning until whenever the last person eats, followed by our discussion upstairs on the culture that we owe staff to get back to them on the, the council culture piece to reinforce what they've done that you received a few weeks ago. So June 23rd or June 29th, plan on the afternoon. Um, December 17th, and this raised one question on the committee uh, minutes. The Seguin Recreation and Culture Committee started talking in your minutes about a Christmas concert. And there is a Christmas concert pool fundraiser planned on December 17th for the pool at the Stocky Center. So I'm hoping that 
the Sigwin Recreation and Culture Committee doesn't start another Christmas concert to conflict. I really hope that the community will get involved on the 17th. It's a Sunday and the Stocky Center has been donated for that reason. December 18th, today, we just approved a special meeting of council at 2.30 on that Monday for the budget. So that needs to go on your calendar. Um, and I just want to ask, and maybe Terry, you can chime in here. July 1st celebration is at Orville. What time? Councillor maybe, Felder, do you... maybe Dominique can chime in here. I, I okay, because I know that I know the fireworks the are in question given the fire ban. Yeah, yeah. So, Eleven till three, according to Ken. Okay. Yeah. Oh, right. thanks. <laughs> so again, um, with the Seguin Rec Committee as opposed to four or five separate ones, this is the Canada Day celebration for our township, um, yeah. and I believe there's. Hamburgers, hot dogs, and activities for kids. So there's there's, um, there's a silent auction. There's vendors. Uh, the vendors are coming. There's a uh, a band. Uh, the band is coming. Uh, there's a barbecue, hamburgers, hot dogs. There's wood fired pizza. Um, I think there's going to be some face painting and bouncy castle and that kind of thing. Um, pretty much everything that went on prior and maybe a little bit more. And of course the fireworks now are very questionable because of the, you know, the lack of rain. So unless we get. You know, at what point you'll say yay or no to the, to the fireworks. Do we have a drop dead date for that? No. Well, I, yeah, I, I don't think that's really been discussed. I would imagine by the end of the week, the, the writing's going to be on the wall at the end of this okay. week, I would think. That will be up to um, our fire chief can probably uh, give us more insight in that. But I don't see a lot of rain in the forecast showing showing some for the weekend, but how much it would be and how much we really need to get rid of the fire ban. I, I don't know, maybe Sean, if he's on the... Yeah, oh, well, I think we can work with Sean, but I last time there was a ban like this, um, Chief Hood and I did go around to the retail op organizations that were selling fireworks and asked them to pull them from their shelves. Yeah. Um, they're, sell they're actively selling them now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, our plan, I think, would be is if uh, the Orville Canada Day uh fireworks can't go then th those fire nobody's goes <laughs> yeah then those fireworks hopefully can be uh fired off um you know fully fall fair labor day okay thank you and i believe thank you worship members of council and uh, of course to the the public listening in um I might repeat a few things, but I think it's worth repeating. Uh, public engagement for our waste management strategy is underway with the survey now on letsconnect.ca. Uh, paper surveys are also available at the municipal office and at the landfill. Uh, I will note that we've had, uh, thus far, we've had a very strong response to the survey, which is great news. We want people's feedback, so please continue to jump in. Uh, to Let's Connect or visit one of our, uh, the municipal office of the landfill to pick up a copy of that survey. Uh, as you noted, Your Worship, uh, Family Fun Day celebrating community volunteers is happening this Friday at the Russell Waterfront. Uh, we're excited that it'll include a water ski show, barbecue, games, uh, all, all are welcome, all ages are welcome, and we look forward to seeing the community out. But it is RSVP. Uh, but it, it is RSVP. We need to know numbers. So please, uh, please contact the office and let us know if you're coming. Uh, on the Seguin staff side, we are looking forward to uh, barbecue on June 29th, hosted by council. It's always nice for us to take a break and have you do the work for us uh, for a day. So we're really looking forward to that. Uh, and as part of our uh, uh, mental health strategy. It's it's nice to take a break every now and then. Uh, barbecue is a good way to do that, but we're also uh, kicking off a little staff uh, fun this summer with a couple of days where we've uh, uh, decided to have some baseball games and uh, just have some light recreation activity uh, for those that are interested in uh, in participating. 
Uh, again, a bit of a repeat, but the planning department is processing feedback from the draft uh, site alteration bylaws that were uh, shared with the public last month. Uh, those are what was circulated was draft with the intent of getting feedback from uh, the community, from council. Uh, we are in the process uh, of preparing a report that will be shared with council, uh, likely at the next meeting, assuming we can get through all the feedback uh, and share the findings as we prepare uh, to work towards a draft, uh, a revised draft bylaw. The Rosso Market uh, returns June 30th. Uh, the township will be there. We'll have uh, our usual information booth uh, set up, and we look forward to seeing the community out at the market again. Uh, summer ice rentals at the Humphrey Arena begin July 3rd. The crews are over there working hard, uh, chilling the building and getting everything ready to go, which is exciting. And uh, Rosso uh, Waterfront and Foley Matheson swim lessons are set to start on July 4th. A couple other quick things. Uh, our water quality students uh, will begin the benthic testing in, in the lakes around the community the week of July 4th. Uh, this project is done in collaboration with the Georgian Bay Biospheres, so look for our uh, students out in the canoe taking samples. Um, public consultation for the Rosso Memorial Hall restoration project is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, is underway with an open house scheduled for Saturday, July the 8th. Uh, that'll be from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. at the hall. Uh, this is an opportunity for anyone interested uh, in the project to share feedback, learn more uh, about the project, and ask any questions. And perhaps uh, one of the most important uh, components of uh, the next, this term of council, of course, is the strategic plan. Uh, we continue to make progress. Um, as council's aware, our consultant, Karen Winicky, will uh, lead council through a special meeting on July the 10th. Uh, the project leads are also just wrapping up much of the youth engagement portion of the project uh, with broader engagement beginning towards the end of July. Uh, with that, your worship. That is my report for this week. Thank you. Anybody have any questions? What time is the Memorial Day consultation? I just closed the file. I believe it was 10 to three. 10 to three, uh, okay. So you can drop in. It's not, you don't stay for the whole time. Okay, thank you. Um, so I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby receive the board and committee mini meeting minutes and agendas and the correspondence as presented on the agenda and addendum for June 19th, 2023 of council. Could I have a motion? Mayor <coughs> Councillor Bozinski. <coughs> Excuse me, seconded. Councillor Adams. All in favor. Excuse me. And I have a motion that bylaw number 2023-068, being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of meetings of council is hereby deemed to have been read a first, second, and third time and passed by council. Could I have a motion? Oh, I'll move <laughs> that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All in favor. If you come to the meeting, you get your name on lots motion. Yeah. And I have a motion that the Council of the Corporation of the Township of Seguin does hereby adjourn this regular meeting of council at 4.18 p.m. to meet again on Tuesday, July 4th, or at the call of the mayor. Could I have a motion? Councillor Getty? Seconder? I'll second it, yeah. <laughs> All in favor. Thank you. Have a wonderful Canada Day, and I hope to see you on the 23rd, the 29th, and the 1st. And note that the next council meeting is on a Tuesday.